Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. On this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we're in the kitchen cooking up some of our favorite beef recipes. NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen starts right now. And now a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. This week, we're taking a look back at some of our favorite beef recipes that we've cooked here in the studio. And more often than not, they'll leave your family wanting these dishes again and again. Let's start cooking. Eating beef with breakfast is a nutritious and tasty way to start the day. But it isn't always the easiest thing to prepare when you first wake up in the morning. Shanoa French of the Beef Culinary Innovation Center is with us here today to tell us about a beef recipe that's both easy and tasty pr to prepare for either breakfast or brunch. Is that correct? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. We're going to talk through a frittata. And a lot of people probably aren't familiar with a frittata. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm one of those. <laughs> <laughs> it's similar. It fits kind of in the omelet or quiche family. Okay. It's just crustless. So that kind of takes some of the fat component out of it. Um, okay. First thing we're going to talk through, I kind of started a little bit. Okay. So um, for the sake of time, but we've got a non-stick skillet. All right. And the most important thing when you're choosing your skillet is choose one that's oven proof. Ah. And so if you have a plastic handle or something it's like that. It's going to be a problem. Yeah, because it is going to go into the oven. <laughs> okay. So go ahead and preheat your oven right. to 350 so yep. that gets hot while you do the rest of the stuff. Okay. Um, I went ahead and started. Um, the beginning of this recipe calls for four new potatoes. Okay. And you um, cut them into quarters or slices thin enough so that they'll cook. And, and again, you have how, how much zucchini and onion in there? Um, there's one. And I'll talk oh, okay. about that gotcha. here in a minute. So cut these up and you're going to start with them in the pan I with see. water and a lid. Gotcha. Cook them for about 10 minutes. Take them out and hold them aside mm. and um, drain your water off. And okay. then what we did in here, we threw gotcha. a pound of ground beef in here, yep. um, a whole small zucchini sliced, mm. and a half of a yellow onion. Do we so have you, to put the zucchini in? You do have to okay. add it. You could do, well, okay, I'll let you choose another vegetable. Okay, but you right. have to choose a vegetable. Okay. It could be a red bell pepper or something else. Um, but what most important thing is you want to cook your beef, yep. um, drain it if you need to. Um, we used a 90% lean, so we're pretty good. Sure. Here, salt. Uh, season it with a little salt and pepper okay. so that it's all done. And this is pretty much, if you wanted to put this in an omelet, that components is all completely done. Oh, gotcha. okay. So once that's all done, yep. then we're going to go ahead and move to your eggs. So all this right. is just six large eggs. Oh. And put them in here and you whisk them together. No milk or anything? No milk or anything, just okay. six large eggs. So after you have that, you're going to take some fresh basil. Mm -hmm. And this gives it a real nice fresh aroma that you, you'll smell here in a minute. So okay. about three tablespoons, and if you like more or less, add it as you will. I always put it in here and stir it a little bit so okay. it gets evenly distributed I in see. here. Yep. So I'm going to do a little of this. Very good. Um, you can do it with a fork if you want to. Sure. And what you're going to do is also add a little bit of salt and pepper. Uh huh. And I'm going to add it in here gotcha. so that we... Um, Even though we've already salt and peppered the, the Yeah, yep. the recipe calls you to do a little bit at the beginning sure. to start it and then a little bit at, um, when you add it to the egg Very mixture. Good. It good. makes sure that everything's thoroughly incorporated in here. Very good. So, there's, here goes Six the fun eggs. part. Six eggs, yep, okay. Yeah, and a little bit of fresh basil. Yeah. Um, you're going to go ahead and just pour it over the top. Oh, ah, yeah. And kind of like make sure that it gets all oh, mixed I see. in. Because you want the egg, what it'll do when we put it in the oven, is it will, um, the fat in there kind of fluffs. I and see. It, it'll grow on us. Gotcha. Um, a third of a cup of Italian cheeses, oh, a perfect. nice white cheese. A light cheese, or yeah. a half a cup, whatever you prefer. Or if you're doing it at Kevin's <laughs> house, that's what you get. So now what I'm going to do is this is going to go ahead and go in the oven. Okay. And um, as we talk about the magic of TV. Wow, look at that. Here comes one. A microwavable dish. Yeah. <laughs> and this one goes in. We'll get this stuff out of the way for sure. us. Sure. Um, what I, we, if you want to go ahead and grab that plate. Oh, absolutely. Um, you can either, if you want to serve it as a whole family style, uh -huh. these things will slide directly out on a plate. Okay. Or we've cut them and we're just oh, going to take a piece out of there for you. Look at that. So this, as we talk about it, it's a crustless 
and it's got the nice the eggs fluff up in there. Wow! And you've got ground beef and all your other vegetables. So well, I've got to try this. Yeah. Um, about how how many people will this serve? You know, this one will serve four to six, depending mm -hmm. on uh, how big of a, of a piece you want for breakfast, how many people are eating, and then we've paired it with some nice berries for anti antioxidants and some orange juice if you want it. That's perfect. You know, I'll tell you what, I think of bacon and sausage and ham, but I'll be honest, we don't do a lot of hamburger or beef for breakfast. This is delicious. Well, and it's that simple way as you, as you think about using it, you can kind of take this to a little bit of a Mexican version if you want to do stewed tomatoes and chilies and, and a little that. different cheese too. So it's a, it's a great brunch option as Mother's Day and Easter comes around. Thanks so much for coming again. Thanks. Thanks for having me. For other great breakfast ideas that include beef, head to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. After a busy day at work, it's always good to come home to a hot meal. But with just a few minutes of preparation in the morning, you can have just that. Shanoa French of the Culinary Innovation Center at NCBA is with us to talk to us about the lazy day beef and vegetable soup. What do you have going here? Yeah, so what we're going to do today is we're going to use a meal that, or it's a crock pot recipe. Okay. And the best thing that you can do is it, you set it up in the morning, yeah, we call it a dump dump recipe, so yeah. you open cans, kind of dump them all dump in there, it. put a lid on them, and you're out the door. Come home and do a quick couple additions, as we call it, or finishing steps, and then you have dinner on the table. Um, most people can translate any stew recipe mm -hmm. or soup that you would do on the stove can be also done in a crock pot. Perfect. It just changes some of the timings. So um, we're going to start with about two and a half pounds of stew meat. And okay. if you want to um, cut stew meat yourself, you can. And yep. right now, you can go into the meat case in any grocery store, and, and they have stew meat for you. You bet. So it's a quick, easy two and a half pounds Good. into just the crock pot. Dump, dump. Yeah, so <laughs> this will be our first one. OK. Um, that goes in. There is um, kind of the. Two sides of the house, as we talk about whether you should always brown meat before you add them to the crock pot. Mm -hmm. You can. It will add um, some other flavor. There's a process that goes through called a Maillard reaction and some browning effect that will give you okay. more beef flavor. Yep. If you're using chuck um, stew meat, you have more beef flavor in chuck than if you're using a round or, or something further down the animal. So um, if you're going to use a chuck stew meat, it's not as important. Okay. But if you're using something else, you can brown it before it would First. go in. Very just add good. another step. That's helpful to know. So yeah, two and a half pounds of ground. Yep. Of, um, I'm sorry, stew meat stew in. Meat. Yep. We're going to go ahead and add two cans of low sodium. Uh, the low sodium is important of beef broth okay. to go add in here for your moisture. Okay, so not um, too much salt. Nope, not too much salt. And yep. the moisture in there helps with the cooking process. We're doing what's ah. called braising. Yep. And so that's that moist heat cooking process that makes the beef tender. Okay. So water, we're also going to add um, one more cup of water, oh, which will give us just a, a little liquid. bit more liquid. Yep. Yeah, all right. to make sure that it, it breaks that way down. you're as not, it, uh, you, you have all day for, for that to go and you don't have to worry about it even if you're not outside or whatever. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So that, and then we're going to do a can of chickpeas. Um, drain them, obviously, before gotcha. they go in. If you don't like chickpeas, you yeah. can do kidney beans, black beans. You can choose a can of beans of your, gotcha. of your choice. Yeah, I'm not a big, Just, big fan. Yeah, make sure they're drained. Okay. Rinsed and drained, usually. Very good. So that goes in. And what, some tomatoes? Yes, this is another can of mm -hmm. um, no salt added. Um, as you add that beef broth, that'll kind of pull in some salt. Gotcha. So no salt added stewed tomatoes. All right. Not, you don't need to drain these because we, again, want that moisture. Okay. So that goes in. Um, our seasoning, we're going to do a teaspoon of dried Italian seasoning oh. and then a little bit of salt and pepper. So a little Italian flavor. Yeah, so then do we need these vegetables? Or? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, so okay. this all gets mixed together. Go ahead and give it a stir once so you can incorporate as you see the, the vegetables or, or the herbs are going to float on top. Give them a stir through okay. and then go ahead and all you need to do is put the lid on and walk away. If you on have low or that depends. If um, you want it on low, that means about eight hours. Okay. If you want it on high, it's about six. So it kind of depends on how much time you have for the day or, or what Very you're good. doing. Very good. Um, so this will cook all day long. Okay. No stirring required. When you get home, mm -hmm. um, then it's called the finishing steps that we talked about earlier. Okay. So your beef will be tender, and that's the most important thing to check when you get home is give it a stir and go ahead and check. Make sure your beef's tender okay. in there with the fork. Yep. And then this is going to be two cups of frozen vegetables. Okay. So you can do a mixed blend. Here we've got, um, there's a little bit of green beans and peas and carrots corn. and corn. You bet. So pick what you like, about yep. two cups. That goes directly in here. Okay. So that all gets mixed into it as well. Yep. And then the next step, um, this is kind of where you'll make a decision factor for you. Okay. If you have an extra hour, 
um, you would go ahead and add in, this is a cup of, of small pasta that's not cooked. Uh, so if you have an hour, and that, this is how the recipe lists it out, you would go ahead and dump this in, yep. put the lid back on them, and then let it cook for Wait an hour. An hour. Okay. And so what the other moisture in there is doing is, is cooking this pasta. Gotcha. If you don't want to wait an hour and your beef is tender when you get home, mm -hmm. you're probably going to need, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes for those vegetables. But you could boil this on the stove top just in regular I salted see. water. Yeah, and then dump them all dump together. Dump it in, gotcha. Yeah, so it kind of depends. This is where it gives you your variation at night when you get home. Sure. Um, so if you wanted to do this, this would get dumped in there. Again, lid goes on. You can finish chores of the house or whatever you need sure. to do to set the table. Um, and then the last bit of it, as you serve it, you're just going to go ahead and sprinkle uh, just a little bit of Romano or Parmesan cheese on top. That's fantastic. Yeah. We've parted with a, a nice whole grain roll and you have dinner. You're ready to go. Well, what a great example of how with just a little prior preparation, you can still have a, a great and an economical meal for the entire family when you get home. Absolutely. It's, it's our version of the microwave meal because it takes about the same amount of time when you get home. Outstanding. For more time-saving recipes and plenty of others, head to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. At Merck Animal Health, we are dedicated to improving the health and well-being of animals through innovative science-based solutions, products, treatments, and services to ensure a dependable, affordable food supply. From cattleman to consumer, from farm to family, we're with you every step of the way. We work where you work. What drives you drives us. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Tough trailers built for tough country. Big Ben Trailers manufactures a different kind of trailer. One that's built to put up with the rough conditions found on the ranch. Rugged built using heavy gauge powder coated steel and a 2x4 rectangle tube frame. There's a one inch gap between the side and floor, so there's no place for water or manure to accumulate and rust. Big Ben trailers are loaded with standard features, a lever action hitch, a three foot escape gate, and a middle sorting gate, rhino lining along the front edges, and a receiver hitch to tow another trailer, chute, or other equipment. Tough and practical, that's Big Ben trailers, designed and built by a working cattleman you can rely on and trust Big Ben trailers for their durability and convenient features. Reasonably priced for any rancher to afford. For a list of dealers and other design features, visit BigBenTrailers.com. Big Ben Trailers, built cattlemen tough. When it comes to versatility on your operation, nothing beats a John Deere D-Series skid steer. They're not only great for cleaning and feed chores, but with John Deere Worksite Pro attachments, you can tackle just about any job thrown your way. You asked for versatility, and John Deere delivered. These rock-solid machines are built to last. See your dealer today. As we head into the spring and summer months, why not add some fresh flavors to your nightly meal? Chef Genoa French of the Beef Culinary Innovation Center at NCBA is with us to talk to us about a beef and asparagus pasta toss. Absolutely. Tell us what you have here. Well, this is one of our quick weeknight meals. Mm -hmm. And as most people think about ground beef, they think of tacos, sure. spaghetti sauce, something that they just throw together. And we want to give them another option. This okay. is also one of those meals that you can have on the the, on the table for a family of four in less than 30 minutes. Perfect. So we're going to start with the pasta. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to boil about six cups of water. You okay. need enough. We're going to use three cups of uncooked pasta, mm -hmm. bow tie variety. This is a um, whole wheat one, oh. and you can use whichever one you want. Sure. Um, when we talk about boiling pasta, we want to make sure that we add enough salt to the water. Really? Um, the kind of the, the trick or the tip that we were given through culinary school is make it taste like the ocean. Really? If you don't add salt to the water, it pulls the salt out of the pasta mm. and puts it into the water because they like that equilibrium. And then you'll that. have a less flavorful pasta. So salt your so, water, salt boil water. the pasta. Yeah. So and what we're doing with um, this, we kind of do a two for one step. So you'll throw your pasta in, cook for about 10 minutes, and then the last three or four minutes that your pasta would be cooking, you throw your one inch pieces of asparagus. Right with the pasta. Right with the pasta. So you cut them up and have everything ready. This recipe is really important to get all your things together because okay. it goes together really quickly. Okay. So one, e one inch pieces of um, asparagus, 
toss it in the last three to four minutes, you drain them all together, okay. and then just rinse them in cold water. Gotcha. So that way it kind of stops. We call it blanching and shocking your vegetables. We'll keep your nice green color as we go through this. Very good. So get these together and, and kind of put them aside. So it's looking good so far. I yes. love asparagus. <laughs> all right, then we have our, our ground beef, just a pound of ground beef, okay. and go ahead and brown it on the stove. You can brown that on the stove while your pasta is boiling. Gotcha. Um, take it out of the pan, pour off the drippings. We recommend using 90% lean and above. Sure. Um, so you won't have a lot, but go ahead and put that aside on the bowl. Okay. And now we're ready to get cooking. So, right. um, hot skillet, and again, I like to use a larger skillet and toss everything into one stove instead of having to toss things back into the bowl. So, gotcha. I use a little bit larger one. If you don't have one at home, you can kind of go the other way. Yeah, okay. um, we're going to start with a little bit of olive oil. Yeah. So about three tablespoons of olive oil. All right. um, go ahead and put this in there. If you don't want to use olive oil, you don't have to. Okay. Um, Got your heat on kind of low, but what we're going to want to do is we've got some shallots. Oh, yeah. And this is about a quarter of a cup of shallots. Okay. Uh, minced. If you don't can't find shallots, you can use onions. Yep. They're all kind of in the same family. These are just a little stronger. Very good. So go Get ahead some and... some flavor to that pasta. Yeah. Huh? Toss these in there. Okay. Um, you want to make sure your, your oil is a little warm um, before you start adding stuff in there. As you can gotcha. hear, it's starting to sizzle. Yep. Yep. Um, the vegetables will absorb less oil if it's hot. I see. So um, there's your shallots. The yep. next thing we're going to add is two to three cloves of minced garlic. Love uh, garlic. More if you like it, less if you don't. Yeah. So that goes in. I'm smelling already. It smells great. <laughs> and then to top that off, we're going to do just a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay. All right. All right. And how long are you going to cook this then? You know, this is, this is quick. So it kind of okay. depends on, on how hot your pan is. You're gotcha. going to want to, as we talk about either sweating or, or kind of reducing down those, you want to bring out their flavor by yep. the heat. Yep. And you almost want to make your shallots that translucent because mm. you can start to smell them. You it don't want to cook great. them too long because otherwise you'll burn the garlic. And also olive oil has a lower smoke point than most oils because oh, okay. you don't want them too hot. Gotcha. So that's why you kind of keep it on lower, gotcha. lower heat. It so, smells great, Shanoa. Yeah, you'll give it, give them a couple stirs, mm -hmm. let them get nice and translucent. And then as this happens, yeah. we're going to add gonna our next? Yeah, ground beef. We're going to add that here. back in. So this will go back into the pan right. and it'll help you... Um, it's going to start heating it back up. Gotcha. You want to make sure this has probably only been out of the pan for, you know, maybe 10 minutes I as see. you work still through. Warm. Still warm. Yep. Still warm. So yep. you kind of want to mix all your garlic wow. and the shallots through that. Yeah. Um, get a little bit of the olive oil and the salt and pepper all incorporated. It smells great. Yeah, that's outstanding. <laughs> so once you're there, yeah. and I talked about, we're going to do all of this will go into here. In the same way. Wow. Yeah, if your pan's not big enough at home, then you can go the other way. That's great. So what I'll do is I'll slowly slide all these guys in there. Yeah. And the olive oil is kind of working as your sauce okay. that's in there. Yep. You can throw that right down there. So, and this comes the toss part. Gotcha. So you can either do it in a big bowl or, that's right. or do it in the I want to see you skillet. kind of <laughs> tossing it on the skillet, maybe. I, I don't know if the skillet's <laughs> quite big enough. I'm going to end up with pasta <laughs> tossed all over the counter, Kevin. Um, uh, that's so great. you'll toss this all together, and you can either serve it family style yeah. directly out of the skillet, or you could portion it up. It um, looks great. Yeah, as you top off just a little bit of Parmesan cheese. So oh, you'll sprinkle right just right on, on the top. That gotcha. tops off every pasta dish, Absolutely. Right? Or and a lot of Parmesan yeah. cheese. <laughs> and here and is a single is, portion with a nice great. piece of bread. I've got to try this. I, I have to tell you that I love uh, asparagus and uh, you're, you're doing all the things right here. Yeah, and the, the perfect part if you don't like bow tie pasta or you can't find it, you can use um, wagon wheel or some of the spiral. Just mm -hmm. make sure that they're smaller so they'll fit on your fork easier. So we recommend not using full on spaghetti with it. That's great though. What, what, what a quick and easy dish and a healthy one at that. Yep, and it reheats perfectly for lunch the next day if you need it to. Thanks for a great unique idea. For this recipe and others featuring great tasting beef, head to our website at cattlemanandcattlemen.org. It's a dish you don't often see outside the month of March, but corned beef is a great everyday recipe. And joining me in the studio is Chef Genoa French from the Chekhov funded Beef Culinary Innovation Center at the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Thanks again for coming and sharing this recipe. I have to tell you, Auctioner is not exactly an Irish name, but I am interested when you when you put corned beef and cabbage together. So tell us what you have. Well, today uh, the recipe is slow cooked corned beef with a red currant mustard sauce. Hmm. So this recipe is um, ideal for those that want to start it in the morning. Oh go away to work and then come back. I know St. Patrick's Day this year is, is on a weekend, so that's not as necessary a problem. Sure. But um, if you want to do this on the stove, you can. It takes a little bit less time. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here with crock pot. Yep. Um, and go ahead and load all our ingredients into this and 
set the timer and walk away. Um, we're going to start with two medium-sized onions. You don't need to cut them real small, just quarter of them. They're giving us flavor, so that's kind of their purpose. Okay. And then three stalks of celery. Very good. So we're going to dump this in here. In the bottom. That's in the bottom. That kind of gives you the base, so nothing burns down there as well. Okay. Um, the next thing, we're going to take about two, two and a half pound brisket, depending on how much you need for your family. Mm -hmm. One trick is make sure that it fits in your crock pot, <laughs> the bigger you get, the bigger crock pot you're gonna need. Correct. So um, this will come corned already. It's it's brisket that's corn. It'll come in a package. Yep. Usually has um, a pickling seasoning sure. with it. The, the package yeah. With it. If it doesn't have one, you'll need to just get some in the grocery aisle. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this inside. Yeah. Just right on top. Yep. Just right on top. I'm gonna stick it in there. Okay. Um, then your dump seasoning. your seasoning yep. on top. Very good. And then the other trick to this is one can of beer. Oh, so okay. go ahead and, and pick your favorite, whatever you have in the refrigerator. Sure. Um, just a 12 ounce can or bottle. Very goes good. Goes right on top. Yep. And you do need a little bit of liquid. This All will right. help with the cooking process. This um, is, is a non tender muscle yep. right at the beginning, so it needs that slow, moist heat cooking sure. to kind of break down. Do you put the fat side up or down, or does it matter? Um, it doesn't matter. Right I always put it down. If you're yeah. going to be cooking it in a pan yeah. with more of an intense heat source, make sure you put it down because it'll kind of protect it a little a little bit. Gotcha. Um, if you're grilling, you would always put fat up so it runs down. Sure. But in a crock pot, it doesn't matter. Lid on. Throw it in the crock um, pot. On high for six to seven hours, on low for nine to ten. So depending on how quickly you need it, sure. much process. Um, this goes in the morning, you walk away. Walk away from When you get home at night and you're ready to eat, you'll need another 25 minutes before you're ready to eat. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do vegetables yep. and, and the sauce. So we're going to start here. These actually get done in the microwave. Mm. It's the easiest way and you can combine them all together. Yep. You're going to take about a pound and a half of cabbage. Yep. Um, more if you like it, the less if you don't. And green cabbage, don't use the red. Right. Um, red new potatoes. Yep. And then just some carrots. Okay. Real easy. Easy enough. Um, one trick I'm going to show you with the cabbage is this is a real kind of a bitter strong sure. piece in there, yep. you're not going to want to eat that. But if you cut it out, you take the core out before you cook them, you're not going to be able to get them out of the pot, oh, the bot, pot as easy. Okay. So what I recommend is that you cut them and leave this in. Huh. Um, and it take, helps It helps hold them hold together. Hold the leaves together. And then once they're all cooked, hmm. you can pull them out and then just slice this out real that quick. That is an interesting So trick. make sure that you um, cut your cabbage down mm -hmm. enough so that it cooks consistently. Um, in this pot, as you see, obviously your potatoes right. and your carrots are much smaller. Um, so even size pieces to some degree to make sure everything cooks evenly. Gotcha. Um, you'd hear you just take a nice good yep. slice off. And piece of that yeah. is still left in there. That's yeah, and good. see yeah. this this piece right here at the bottom sure. kind of holds all your leaves together. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Now, once you've microwaved them, you yep. add about a half cup of water to this, mm -hmm. put saran wrap over the top, stick, stick it in the microwave. microwave. Goes for 12 to 15 minutes, depending on the power of your microwave, um, and how soft you like your vegetables. Sure. Obviously, the longer, the softer they'll get. If you Very don't good. like them real mushy, don't let them go as long. Yep. Um, once they're all done, you're going to take your cabbage out and go ahead and slice off oh, this core. core. So, you so then you're done. That. You just slice this little guy off and don't eat him. He'll be kind of a bitter, hard sure. texture. Um, once your vegetables are all done, yep. you're going to go ahead and add a little bit of butter oh. to them. So just kind of pour that in, toss uh -huh. them all around, and a little bit of black pepper. Perfect. Some seasoning. That's, so, that's easy enough. That's and easy so what do we have here? Jelly? So this is this is our, our red currant jelly. Really? Um, you can find red currant um, jelly. It kind of looks like strawberry or anything else, but mm. it'll have a different flavor Interesting. Um, in the jelly aisle. And you take a whole jar of it. Mm -hmm. And again, this is something that's done in the microwave, and this is done right at the end. Okay. Um, you're getting ready to sit down. It's yep. a quick process. You microwave it, and this has kind of been sitting just a minute, but microwave it so that it gets soft okay. and loose. Um, mm -hmm. Not quite pancake syrup consistency, yeah, but, but kind of like that, yeah. Because okay. what happens is you'll take your jelly mm -hmm. that's warm and you'll mix in three tablespoons of Dijon mustard. Really? So go ahead and, and that gives that little bit of corned beef and cabbage wow. mustard flavor. So mix that in. If yeah. you want to use an old style with uh, the seeds in your mustard, hmm. you're more than you welcome to. You can do to. that as well. Yeah. But go ahead and you can mix them together. Hmm. You can use a whisk if you have a little bit bigger bowl, whatever sure. is easiest for Easy you. For you? Wow. But the warmer your jelly is, the, the smoother easier. this consistency will get. That makes and sense. it kind of gives it a a little bit of reddish brown color. Um, like I said, just keep mixing it until, yeah. until you have your consistency. Mm. Um, if you let it set a little bit and you need to stick it back in the microwave, go ahead that. and give it like 30 seconds. 
whisk it. Um, make sure as you take these dishes out of the microwave, they will be very hot. Yeah. So just, just be careful, be about, careful about that. that. We don't yeah. think about necessarily <laughs> exactly. in the microwave. Um, and then go ahead and slice wow. up your, your corned beef. Um, That's a great your, looking dish. Yeah, put your carrots and your, your vegetables. We pulled a little bit of the celery and onions out. Yep. Um, they do break down quite a bit. Again, okay. they're, they're primarily for flavor, yep. but if you want to add them to your dish, go right ahead. And then whatever you don't eat at dinner can be hashed for the next morning. That's right? fantastic. You've got it all, that, that and Lucky Charms. Right. Yeah. Uh, corn. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming again. This is a great, exciting recipe. For this and other great beef recipes, visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. New Holland is smart for the way you farm. And New Holland Round Balers are smart for the way you raise cattle. By focusing on making the densest bale possible, New Holland Round Balers pack more into each bale, saving you time, fuel, and money. Now that's smart. We can also match your feeding requirements with a variety of bale slicing, cutting, and wrapping options to help maximize your time. Plus, with models designed specifically for silage or specialty crop harvest, New Holland gives you the power to make smart choices to fit your farm or ranch. You work hard to get the most out of every hay season to benefit you and your cattle. From mower conditioners to balers and tractors, New Holland has the right solutions to help you make quality hay and forage for your cattle operation. Visit your New Holland dealer to learn more about the complete lineup of New Holland equipment, in addition to all the benefits available to cattle producers. This business can take time away and become more of your family than your actual family. My days were tough. I had a lot of doctoring, a lot of pulling. Now our days on the feed yard are happy days. It's more about looking at the cattle and enjoying what we're producing versus the alternative, which is pull and treat and bang our head against the wall. We have never wavered from Draxon. We've seen the benefits just keep getting better and better. A good beef roast is a wonderful way to celebrate any occasion with your friends and family or just a nice meal on a Sunday evening. And joining me in the studio is Chef Chinoa French from the Chekhov-funded Beef Culinary Innovation Center at the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Thanks again for coming back to our show. Thanks for having me. Well, it looks like you have an interesting recipe here that's all green in front of us. Tell us what you got going. We do have an interesting recipe for you today. Um, this is a pesto rub tri-tip okay. with a warm tomato um, side with it. Hmm. So that's what we'll talk about. Um, we're going to start here with the, the, with the tri-tip. Yes. Um, this is part of the sirloin, and I went ahead and rubbed this with a pesto already just because it's kind of a messy process. But tell, tell us a little bit about the tri-tip because I know the Californians love it, but it's not a, a cut that everybody knows what it is. You really. know, it, it's not. Um, it's becoming more popular, yep. and uh, even I've noticed in the last six months here in Colorado, you can find it. we can find it in most retail cases anywhere you go. But like I said, it is a cut out of the sirloin. Yep. Um, it's a tender cut. It mm -hmm. grills great. It's not something that needs any braising or any moist heat to lead to tenderness. You can um, use a flavor marinade on it, mm -hmm. but we don't recommend using a tenderizing marinade on it just because it is a pretty tender, tender cut. Tender cut already. Yeah. yeah. Good. So we've started with, like I said, a pre-made pesto. Okay. Um, you can buy it at the grocery store. You can get it frozen. You can get it fresh. I think they even have it jarred now. Hmm. Um, we need about a half a cup. Okay. And you're going to start and just rub it all over. Like I said, it's kind of messy, so that's where they've started. Perfect. And then before we go into the oven, this is going to be an oven recipe instead of um, a lot of people or think that grill. this is something that needs to go on the grill. Sure. Uh, it can as the weather heats up and it's nice and warm outside. Yep. Most of the Californians will always use this on the grill. Yeah. Um, this is kind of one of those crossover recipes. Okay. So I'm going to top it off with a little bit of black pepper. pepper. Okay. Yep. Just kind of give it the seasoning. Sure. I love black pepper. It's yeah. kind of the joke in the kitchen that if I've seasoned it, there's plenty <laughs> in there. Plenty of so, pepper. Um, but what I'm going to start talking about here is roasting pans. Okay. And we do use this in the oven. Yep. Um, most common. Sure. Uh, it, ovens. This is most common yeah. ovens. Yeah. yeah. This is a broiler pan, yeah. technically. This usually comes with all standard yep. ovens. It usually is in that bottom drawer. Yep. Um, the nice thing about it is it has a bottom kind of catches all your drippings down sure. there. Mm -hmm. So this is an option that okay. you can use. Um, 
Another option, and what I'm going to go ahead and stick it in, is this is just a different type of roasting pan. Hmm. Um, it's got a little bit of a grate on the bottom. Sure. The most important thing that you need with a roasting pan is that there is something on the bottom of your pan mm -hmm. keeping your beef off the bottom. I see. Because what happens is when you're truly roasting, um, you need to make sure that it's on there and the air will circulate all around the way around it. the product, sure. come underneath. Uh, if you were to put this in the bottom of the pan, mm -hmm. as it cooks, Sticks. there's water, that moisture that comes yeah. out of your product. And then you're going to have steaming action on the bottom of your pan. Mm. You won't get a nice um, that caramelization or the Maillard reaction all the way around the food. A wire rack would do the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah. If you okay. have some sort of a metal cookie sheet at home with a wire rack, mm. as long as it's not plastic, absolutely. Okay. So this just gets placed right in the center here. Perfect. Um, very good. That's yep. easy enough. Easy and then to you go. stick it in the oven. Yep. And I'm going to go ahead and stick this in the oven, um, 425 degrees. Okay. So we are roasting. It's a little higher temperature, and it only goes in there for about 30 minutes. Oh wow. Yeah. So it's not a long recipe. Make sure you put it in, you know, the middle to the upper two thirds of your oven. You don't want it real low against the bottom of the oven sure. because you'll have a lot of heat down there. Okay. Um, so set your timer. Make sure that you pull it out at 135 internal temperature mm -hmm. for medium rare. Okay. When you pull that out, it's going to rest mm -hmm. and come up in temperature. So we recommend using an internal 135 for medium rare. Yep. You see now. Yeah. Okay. So in the process, we're going to make um, our tomato topping mm -hmm. that goes on that. Okay. Goes on top of the plate. This is a can of Italian stewed tomatoes. Mm. One can, real simple, any brand. Sure. Into um, a sauce pot. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Okay. You're going to want medium heat, nothing okay. more. What you're looking to do is to reduce this down mm -hmm. and pull the moisture out of the tomatoes. So I it's see. more of a thickened sauce. I see. Um, a half a cup of white diced onions. If you want to use yellow, you can. Whatever you want. Um, just for flavor. So okay. those get mixed in there. And then the recipe, as you see, will call for pesto, pesto to go in, in here in there. as well. Okay. Sure. But the trick with that is you want to wait until um, this sauce gets reduced. Why is that? All the way. Um, if you add it now, the, the fresh herbs and stuff that are in here will end up getting cooked. Oh. They don't need to be. Um, as you add this in, it'll also give you more of a brown color. It's going to muddy your, okay. your clarity on this. Oh. Um, because pesto doesn't need to be cooked, sure. it will not, Towards it'll kind of mute then. the flavor of the pesto at the end. I so, see. again, this goes on medium heat, mm -hmm. um, doesn't really need to be watched, it can kind of be stirred. For about how long? Ever so often, about 15 to 20 minutes. Like okay. I said, same kind of time, yep. get your roast in, that real simple ingredients go in, and you kind of let it go. That's outstanding. Um, watch it so it don't burn, you don't want to cook good. it too fast. Yeah. yeah, and in the Italian stewed tomatoes, that can yeah. has a little oregano, yeah. a little garlic, but it's real simple. Yeah. So we're going to let this go. Okay. Once most of your moisture is out of those tomatoes, you just dump in yep. and go ahead and give it a stir. Outstanding. And then what you have over here is as you pull your roast off, like I said, make sure you let it rest. Mm -hmm. So you'll take it out, pull it out of the roasting pan. Sure. Because if you leave it in the roasting pan and tent it, it'll cook much more oh, and I then see. it'll be overcooked. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, that carryover temperature is important that you let it rise and rest. But if you leave it in that hot pan and it's tent it just a little much. bit, yeah, you're going to have a roast more done than you okay. had anticipated. And then you just Cut yep. it against the grain? Yep. The more, most important thing is you slice it against the grain. And as you see, this does have a, still a little green color yeah. to it, but it's kind of something unusual. Um, and it's got a great flavor, pinkness on the inside. That's and then fantastic. you just add those great stewed tomatoes next to it. What a great recipe. That's, yeah. that's outstanding. Thanks for so much for coming and sharing this again with us, Shanoa. We really appreciate that. And for this and other great beef recipes, just visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Hi there, I'm Joey. And I'm Rory, and welcome to our farm outside Nashville, Tennessee. When we go to work, whether it's on tour or here at home, we wear the West. That's right. Where it's that perfect snap shirt or that perfect pair of boots. When you wear Roper, you wear the West. Learn more about us, Joey and Rory, and about Roper Western wear at eroper.com. Telling the truth and being real and feeding my family home-cooked meal that's important to me that's important to me and planting the garden and watching it grow I'm Kevin Oxter host of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman check us out at cattleman to cattleman .org or on Facebook and Twitter
NCBA and the Beef Checkoff continue to fund research that drives innovation and develops new products. And this includes coming up with great new beef recipes. One man who has been front and center for all this work is executive chef Dave Zeno. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter has more on Chef Dave and his passion for cooking up new ways to serve beef. Before a restaurant can add a new beef dish to the menu, someone has to create the recipe and test it. Very often that person is Dave Zinno. Dave serves as the executive chef for NCBA. My role is basically spokesperson, culinary spokesperson uh, on behalf of the checkoff uh, and you know the entire, entire beef industry. And it's, it's, a, it's a job I, I really love. Uh, I get to travel the country uh, working not only with um, other chefs, but uh, culinary students, consumer food companies, uh, restaurant chains, uh, chef associations, uh, as well as uh, culinary educators. In this role, Chef Dave wears many hats, ranging from industry expert to public speaker, writer, and television personality. He graduated from Illinois State with degrees in political science and sociology, but quickly realized his true passion was in the kitchen. One of my friends said, you know, you love to cook so much, why don't, you, why don't you go to culinary school? And I was like, you know, a light bulb went off in my head. It was like, yeah, not, not a bad idea. So I did that uh, and then started off in traditional restaurant work, hotels, uh, worked a while uh, in um, retail meat and seafood. And then uh, I've got experience in uh, recipe editorial work, writing recipes, developing recipes. I worked for a cookbook publishing company that did those little digest size magazines you see at the checkout. Uh, and then uh, my boss left there uh, and said, would you ever be interested in, in working for the uh, National Cattlemen's Beef Association? So 10 years later, uh, here we sit. Chef Dave is part of the Beef Checkoff funded culinary innovations team that develops concepts and recipes for both the retail and food service industries. He also works closely with the Checkoff funded Beef Innovations Group to evaluate and develop new beef cuts. We continually, you know, do new research uh, into, uh, into these new cuts uh, to help, uh, you know, maybe get a, a steak out there uh, at, a, at a better price point, uh, a new cut that, uh, that will better utilize a, a, a subprimal. Uh, so th that work is ongoing. I, you know, I started 10 years ago, and that's when the, uh, the flat iron steak uh, was first introduced. And I probably cook more flat iron steaks than any person on this earth, but uh, it was really, really a great experience to be, you know, on, on the front end of that, uh, to be able to, you know, roll that out to the industry. Another of Chef Dave's favorite accomplishments is his work revising the award-winning publication Creating Crave, a professional's guide to flavor. It's a beef checkoff funded publication that helps food professionals understand the science and chemistry of flavor. It also explains the concept of umami, which is considered the fifth taste. I think uh, we put umami on the map. That's put us a leader not only in the uh, food service community, but also you know with consumer food companies, showing them that, that beef can be part of you know their recipe development, uh, and you can do it in, in a, uh, a a delicious and easy way once you understand umami. As Chef Dave travels the country, he gets a chance to share the story of the farmers and ranchers who are the foundation of the American beef industry. They're truly the stewards of, of our land, uh, and uh, cattle is raised in all 50 states, so I, I like to call it the most local uh, of, of products out there. Uh, and, th you know, farms and ranches have been in families for generations, uh, and to me that really speaks of uh, sustainability. I mean, we are, you know, our, our farmers and ranchers really are the, uh, the leaders of the agriculture uh, uh, industry, and, and meeting them and working with them uh, you can really see the pride that goes into uh, uh, all the work they do, no matter what segment of the, of, of the, industry, the industry they're in. Uh, and it's, it, it's, always, it's always rewarding for me to be able to speak to people uh, and educate them on, on the great work that our farmers and, and ranchers are doing. As you can imagine, after personally testing thousands of recipes, Chef Dave has trouble picking his favorite way to eat beef. Ah, well, I'll tell you what, uh, that's, uh, that's like asking a parent, you know, what's their favorite child. Uh, but uh, you ask me the question, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you the answer. Uh, 
I'm a big uh, I'm a big ribeye guy. Uh, I'll, I'll say that. You know, I think one of the one of the, the best recipes in the world is a is a grilled steak with a little salt and pepper on it. It's an exciting time to be in the industry. Uh, I think uh, there's a, a lot of good news about beef out there, and it's my job to uh, help convey that. Reporting from Chicago, Illinois, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To learn more about Chef Dave or to find some great beef recipes, just visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. If that cold weather nip in the air has you ready for some comfort food, this next beef recipe should be right up your alley. And with us today, we have Laura Hagen from the uh, culinary team at the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Tell us about this slow cooking recipe you've uh, okay. brought to us today. Okay. Well, when when I get really, really tired of cooking, mm -hmm. one of the best things you can possibly do is bring out the slow cooker <laughs> and let it cook for you. Okay. Um, the nice uh, thing about it is that you can actually put it on in the morning and you can yeah. put it on low and you can actually cook for about eight or nine hours while you're at work. Just when you get it. home, it's ready to go. That's perfect for a lot um, of family. And also, if you want to use something like this, you can turn it up a little higher if okay. you're on the weekend and you maybe only need four or five hours. Gotcha. Um, Put it up, uh, the temperature up a little bit, and all of a sudden you've it's got a, a great meal as well. It's a little fancier slow cooker than we have, but I know what it you're is. talking about. It is. Yeah, you'll see them. They usually have a ceramic pot in yeah. um, inside, so as you can see, little ceramic pot. Sure. But um, they're pretty much doing all the same thing. Yeah. It's just some of these are, are more counter friendly in terms of people wanting to leave them out and that kind sure. of thing. Sure. Um, so we're doing a really cool recipe. Yeah. This is actually kind of Greek inspired. Really? It's, yes. Okay. It's a Mediterranean beef, and we're actually using some mixed olives and some feta cheese. Very good. So that's good. kind of bringing in those Greek flavors. Yeah. So. What we're basically doing is we're going to take our ingredients, which yep. we'll talk about, and we're going to put them all in the crock pot, mix it up a little bit, and then we're going to put the lid on and turn it on. That's perfect. That's, That's easy. That's it. So what we're going to go to first is actually our stew meat. This okay. is actually beef for stew. So you see that. Yeah. And, um, and you just uh, go ahead. Do you have to trim it or, or well, what Well, sometimes, sometimes what you do is you'll find this, um, you'll find it in, in really, really large chunks. Yeah. Sometimes it won't be chunked and you actually cut it yourself. Yeah. Um, usually, you know, try to keep a consistent size, size. because they're all going to be cooking the same amount of time. Sure. So it's nice to have a consistent size. So okay. we're simply going to just take this. Yeah. About how much of that? This is actually about two pounds. Okay. And we're going to throw that right in there. Begin with that in our slow cooker. And yeah. a lot of times what people will do, and people have probably seen this in recipes, where you actually um, put a little bit of flour on your meat, oh. and you might put it in to either a pan on the stove, kind of brown or maybe it. even in your crock pot, um, and brown it a little bit. Okay. Depends on whether or not you're using a high temperature or a low temperature. And that will give it a little more caramelization, it'll give a little bit more color. This will tend to be, if we look at um, our final version, it'll tend to be kind of a brown, okay. fairly brown dish, and that's okay. why you want to utilize some really fun olive colors to bring out some color in the dish. Very so good. there's our two pounds of meat. Yeah. And then we're Tomatoes. actually going to go to, these are simply, um, Canned tomatoes, two cans, okay. 14 and a half to 15 ounce cans. And basically these just have a little bit of um, chili, a little bit of green pepper. Oh. And so they just they just have kind of a nice little chili seasoning. Already in them. Already in them. Okay. So you don't have to doctor them up at all. Okay. And actually if you wanted to change kind of the way that this um, this this whole dish actually worked, you could actually put in like an Italian style tomato. Oh, okay. You know, maybe add a little bit of different flavor, oregano and some basil and that kind of thing. Okay. So oh. we're going to put those in. Yeah. Dump those That's right easy in here. so far. I can run really a can opener. Really easy. Yep. See, anyone can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what about these olives? I'm not used to putting olives in a beef dish. Yeah. Well, olives are the nice thing about olives is that they have a really nice briny saltiness. Mm -hmm. So instead of having to put salt, a ton of salt okay. into your food, you're using the brine of this to actually season your food. Excellent. Now, you may take it out and decide that you want to put a little bit more salt in it to okay. your own uh, flavor. But what's nice is that they do have a real natural flavor. Sure. Um, these are actually mixed olives. So okay. when we work with these, um, you know, you're using them really for color and for mm. flavor. Mm -hmm. These have some Kalamata olives and then some green olives. Um, Kalamata are Greek. So, okay. of course, we're sticking with our Greek um, kind of ingredients. Yes, makes sense. And I'm just going to show you all you do, buy them pitted. Okay. Mm -hmm. So pitted, literally slice them. In half. Very good. Easy. Throw enough. them in there. Sure. Super, super easy. Sure. And actually, I think I was going to put those in first. Okay. Get those in there. Get those in there. Because I want to get this cooking. going. Absolutely. And then we'll Just talk a little up, bit huh? about the olives. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So that is pretty much it. Yeah. That, that is super easy, isn't it? No yep. more spice or seasoning. Um, actually, we're going to put a little bit of salt and pepper, but oh, we're yeah, talking okay. a quarter a little bit. teaspoon of pepper yeah. and about a half a teaspoon of salt. And no more salt. additional liquid. Nope. That's it. You've got so much liquid in those tomatoes, and as they cook, 
they're going to release even more liquid. And you're also putting a lid on here. Yep. So you're getting all that condensation on top and it's going to keep dropping down. That's great. So just like when you water a plant and yeah. <laughs> cover a plant when you go on vacation. Fantastic. Um, this I wanted to show you real yeah. quick. This is actually feta cheese. Oh, yeah. So this is a Greek cheese. Okay. It's just a very um, easy cheese to get at the grocery store. You yeah. can actually get it in a brick or you can get it um, crumbled okay. already just in a little tiny like kind of a butter container. Yep. And that is actually what you're going to put on top of the stew. Afterwards. After you're done. Okay. Yep. And, and so we don't want to melt this. We just want to use this as kind of a pre-accent to the It looks color. like uh, we've, we've got a beautiful dish here. And what did you add to this uh, as This a actually has some Greek bread, pita bread. Okay. And all we did is we threw it on the grill so that we got a little crispiness to it. And good. then we put it on some basmati rice, which is um, kind of an Indian flavor rice. Mm -hmm. It's um, super, super easy to grab any kind of rice that you like. Right. I mean, you can do brown rice if you want to stay kind of a little more healthy with the whole grain. Mm -hmm. And then we just put the stew on top and top it with the feta cheese. Well, that is good. I'm not always a fan of all of this, but I actually like that. Yeah, I think mixed in, they, they mm -hmm. kind of change a little bit. They're, not, they're not so obvious. And super easy, as you said. Yes, absolutely. So. For more information on this and other great, easy recipes, just visit us at cattlemantocattlemant.org. No storm is too powerful for New Purina wind and rain storm minerals, formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. I'm an NCBA member. I'm an NCBA member because I think uh, as an advocacy group, NCBA has done some great things for our industry and I kind of feel compelled to, to give back some of what they've done for us. Because this organization is looking out for cattle producers. They understand what makes our cow-calf business profitable. Join me today. Join me today. Join NCBA today. Head to BeefUSA.org or call 866-USA-BEEF. Glenn's worked his ranch since he was a boy. A lifetime invested raising cattle and crops and caring for the land and producing a product his urban neighbors can enjoy and trust. Well, why does he go that extra mile? So someday someone he loves can carry it on. IMI Global Third Party Verification can be your partner in helping you to market wisely and responsibly in this new world where people care where their food comes from. Real people. Let's face it, you don't think a lot about your trailer hitch. You use it and forget it. We understand, but at B&W, we think about it. Short nights, long hauls, never-ending chores, the unthinkable. We think about it all, so you don't have to. B&W, trusted. Will you be able to survive in agriculture? Well, here's a test designed by the Cowboy Statistical Service to help you evaluate your chances. Now, you may take this test at home. Please select either A or B. Question number one. My present financial portfolio includes A, over one million in land and livestock free and clear, or B, a 10-year-old three-quarter ton pickup, six horses worth four cents a pound, and a wife with a job. Number two, most of my ready cash is in A, interest-bearing checking accounts, or B, a Copenhagen lid on the bedroom dresser. Number three, my banker calls me A, Mr. B, ever two hours. Question number four, my idea of a sound financial investment is A, undeveloped pasture in downtown Dallas, or B, a racing greyhound. Number five, the best cattle deal I ever made was A, sold 3,000 head of 28 cent Coriandis for 56 cents three months later. Or B, I stole a truckload of feeder calves and lost $32 a head. Question number six, I started ranching because A, I love the land and inherited $5 million. Or B, my daddy chained me to a tractor when I was six years old. Question number seven. I intend to ranch and farm 
as long as I can, A, make money, or B, borrow money. And question number eight, the reason I ranch and farm today is A, I find it a fascinating and lucrative profession, or B, I'm in too deep to quit. Well, if you selected all A's, you're an optimistic management type with oil on your property. It's highly likely that you will survive and invest in satellite technology. However, if you selected all B's, you're presently engaged in modern marginal agricultural practices. You will be here tomorrow and the next day and the next and the next because somebody will always have to be there to do the work. Well, thanks. I hope this little test will be helpful to you. This is Baxter Black from out there. Join producers from around the country at the 2014 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Nashville, Tennessee. It's an event that, that we will never miss. I love seeing the enthusiasm. I think it's great. It's perfect combination and the perfect time to hold the NCBA convention. Join your fellow cattlemen for the latest cattle industry news, education, networking, and fun. Plus, at the NCBA Trade Show, get the latest in industry technology for the cattle business. This trade show is one of the best trade shows that is out there. It's amazing the amount of industry and businesses that come here to be a part in. And there's no other place that for those of us as beef producers can go to have this much information in one place. So follow me to Tennessee for the 2014 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Nashville, February 4th through the 7th. Learn more at beefusa.org. I'm Kevin Oxter, host of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Join me Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, right here on RFD TV. Welcome back. Let's take a look at some of the farm and ranch pictures you sent in from across the country in this week's Legacy Photos. I hope you'll keep those pictures coming in. To submit yours, just visit our website at cattleman to cattleman.org. Well, that does it for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. We'll see you back at the same time next week, right here on RFD TV.